Good evening. Hello, hello. It's Jen. I am going to double tap and flip the camera. Hi. Let's get this set up so I'm not bouncing it around. Hey, oh, I just saw Keisha and Michael. And hi, thanks for the hearts. Hey, Amy. Yay, Lauren. <sighs> okay. Hi. Oh, I'm super excited to see all of you all in here. I am um, less less formally prepared this time. There is no download. There is no link to anything. We're just going to talk. Uh, <laughs> didn't even shower. <laughs> really, we're moving households right now, and things are just crazy, crazy. So I am happy Teacher Appreciation Day to you. I think we're just going to chat tonight a little bit. I definitely have a topic, but I want to get ideas from you guys as well. Hey, Eric. Eric, I always say your name, Eric, and I don't know if I should say Arik or Eric, but I'm pretty sure that you and I were in a Voxer group together at some point, and you said Eric, like, with an E. So uh, tell me yes or no if that's correct for me to do that. But may Or maybe I'm confusing you with another Eric I know who spells his name with an A. It's pronounced like, yes. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, so here is the topic. Hey, Jason, and I'm sorry, sorry that... um. I missed last week, but, um, okay, so Lauren lives in Bowling Green, Kentucky with me. We are staying in Bowling Green. We're just moving to a bigger house because, so let me just tell you really quickly. So this is just some personal stuff, sort of. It's not that personal, actually. But um, uh, my husband and I both work out of our home, uh, and so all day long he's trying to talk to me. <laughs> and I've got three kids, too, and I'm trying to get stuff done, and everybody just wants my attention all the time and my office is basically the dining room and it sucks so um, also we've got three kids and two of them um, have been sharing a room forever and they're getting older so we just needed more space so uh, Lauren we're just moving to a bigger house that's it so very excited about that but it's just been very chaotic and and I look like a lamp <laughs> oh my gosh oh now come on hang on I thought you look like a lamp was funny, but then it just got mean. All right. So the idea tonight is uh, I got a question from a, a teacher who wanted to know how to handle it when students say negative things about other teachers. And I thought this is perfect for a Periscope because I know that's happened to me a lot. And I know that I have handled it in a variety of different ways. And I have different perspective on it now than I think I did when I was in the classroom. I think I probably didn't handle it in the best way. And so I wanted to share my thoughts on that. And I want to hear your thoughts on it. Because I am sure that you all have got um, ideas that I haven't thought of. So let me just tell you what the situation mm -hmm. is for me. Um, this Or the scenario that would typically happen to me. Um, we would be... I did a lot of sort of informal, casual conversation with students. You know, we would be, we would get a lesson done or whatever, but then there would always be time to talk. And because I taught language arts, there was always time for just talking. And I was a middle school teacher, so there's always plenty of time for, you know, just, you know, having conversations. So um, they would, they would talk about their other teachers. And this actually even happened at the college level too. They would say, you know, um, this is going to be another one of those nights. Hang on a second. I get so excited to see all the people that are in the periscope, and then I realize that they're all just going to be gross. So they would start talking about their other classes, or sometimes it would start with, like, a compliment. You know, it would start with, like, oh, you know, you're my favorite teacher or something like that. You know, and... and it's nice, it's an ego boost to have a teacher or have a kid say that, but pretty, you know, quickly it would uh, be followed by kind of a complaint about another teacher. And in middle school and high school, kids have lots and lots of teachers, so, you know, and they would just say something like, oh, I wish we could do stuff like this in so-and-so's class, or I wish that, you know, this other person would let us do this the way that you do. And... You know, sometimes I would say nothing. And and here's the, I guess, the first thing that I want to say about that. The first sort of 
maybe mistake that I would have made in that situation that I think is kind of a mistake and a thing that you have to be careful about is that I would feel good about it when they would say that just a little bit. Uh, and it would, and this, and I'm being brutally honest now. And, uh, I just think there's a lesson to be learned from this. Um, I think feeling good about something like that, it, it automatically set up this dynamic of competition between me and the other teachers. Do you know, it sort of made me feel like, yes, you know, I am doing things better than they're doing, which I don't think there's anything really that healthy about thinking that way because I really needed to be thinking about my relationship with other teachers as something more collaborative and something more uh, that we were a team. And I think sometimes When I would hear things like that from my students, what it did is that it would affirm for me the decisions I was making in the classroom. And it would basically say to me, yes, what I'm doing is I'm on the right track and the kids are enjoying it and they're enjoying this class. And I think that some, you know, somebody could say to that, well, they just like your class because you're not challenging them or you're being too easy on them or you know, you don't have any standards or your classroom management is a mess. So they just think this class is a free for all. But, um, oh no, some, well, I'm going to just keep talking. If, um, when Lauren is getting a, a bad connection, is if anybody else is getting a bad connection also, let me know. And hopefully it'll come through, um, on the replay nicely. Okay. All right. So maybe it's just happening in one section. Anyway, here, so here's what I was saying. The students would give me this compliment. They would sort of compare me to another teacher and I would feel good about it. And I would think, yeah, because this person, this person, and that person, like I would see the way that they would treat the other kids. And I would think that's crappy and they shouldn't be doing it that way. And so when the kids would say stuff, I would feel good about it. But I think when, as soon as you sort of allow yourself to start feeling that way, then it's a slippery slope. I think then you can start to feel more competitive with other teachers and almost feel, there were times when I almost felt like it was me and the kids versus some of the other teachers. And I don't think that's very professional. You know, I just, maybe it's because back then I was closer to the age of my students um, than I am now. But well, you know, that's a good point. Some teachers suck and kids are so powerless. They, they are. <sighs> the kids are powerless. And I think that's the position sometimes I felt like I was being put in. That, you know, I wished that the other teachers could be handling things in a different way. But here's the thing. Here's, here's the mistake that I made. Sometimes I think I would let these conversations go on a little bit too long. So... And there were times when I would just kind of dig right in there and I just start asking them a bunch of questions. And, and I, I just think that especially in middle and high school, when so many of the problems between kids happen because they are talking smack about each other behind each other's backs. And that's what starts, it seems like 90% of the problems in middle and high school is that they are talking about each other. And so for me to even entertain these conversations it, it's a tricky spot to be in because I loved my students. I, I wanted to listen to their problems about pretty much everything else. But as soon as they started to talk about other teachers, I felt like that put me into uh, the position of having to be kind of unprofessional. So here is what I would do differently now. And, and, and the times that I would... I think make the right decision would have been times when I would have stopped the conversation. I think there are several things you could do. One would be to tell the one student who's complaining that you would like to talk to them about this later in private so that it's not, you know, a free for all for everybody in the room talking about this person. Um, what you just said, and I, I didn't see the name, but that, that using this as an opportunity to talk about how not everyone meshes, that's another approach. And that's something that I definitely did sometime too. Just said, you know what? As you all go through school, you are going to find some teachers who you don't get along with as well. 
and you have a choice. You can choose to let your relationship with that teacher get in the way of your future and your options, or you can find some coping strategies for getting through that teacher's class because this is definitely not going to be the last time you're going to have a teacher or a professor who you don't get along with. You don't have to like them, but just respect them. Yeah. And the thing is, we've all had teachers who we couldn't stand. I've had teachers who I thought were just terrible. They were just terrible at what they did. They were disrespectful of students. But if nothing else, I had to at least respect the position of power that they were in. And I had to at least recognize the fact that in some ways they held some of the power over my future. And so I could either be stubborn and dig my heels in and let that bad relationship get in my way, or I could just figure out coping strategies. And so sometimes that's something I would do too. I would talk to my students about, okay, how, how do you handle this? You know, how can you handle this situation when somebody, when you feel someone's being disrespectful to you, but you are not in the position of power? How do you handle it? Are you willing to give up everything? You know, you can teach them that expression about, is this the hill that you're willing to die on? Are you willing to, to really basically sacrifice some things for yourself in order to prove a point or, you know, get your respect or whatever it is? Or can you just kind of duck under and, and deal with it? so that you can get what you need. Um, one of the, the things I was going to be getting back to, too, is that if I'm allowing students to talk about another person without them being there, then what I am modeling for them is that it's okay for them to do that about each other, too. And so I don't necessarily need to shame my students and be like, you know, how dare you? You, can, you know, I will never talk about another teacher, you know, without their presence. But you can just say to them, I, um, I don't feel comfortable talking about another teacher when they're, when they're not in, in the room. And so one of the things that I, that I have done in the past, too, is to try to strategize with that student um, for how to approach that teacher about that issue. And, you know, a lot of times I would suggest, you know, writing them a letter, you know, and they would say, no, she would never listen or whatever. And, and, and I would say, you know, you, you never know unless you try, you know, and, and I would even talk to them about how you, how you use I statements to explain how something makes you feel. Let me read that. I had a conversation with the other staff the way they were. Oh, I missed that one. Okay. Sorry about that. I missed one of the comments. Teachers also need to be spoken to as well. Marjorie, are you saying that it sounds like you're saying that the kids should talk to the teachers instead of talking about them? Uh, or are you saying that that we need to? I can advise you about how to handle this, but I can't entertain gossip. Jason, that's good. That's good. That's exactly – because I think they they need to see – they need to see how a rational person handles that situation because then they can take your model and they can apply the same thing. When they're having lunch with their friends and one of them starts to talk about another person, you can just say, let's not talk about this other person while they're not here. And I really feel like there's a huge difference. I don't know why and I don't know if you agree with this or not, but I feel like there's a huge difference between two people. Um venting to each other and sort of sharing thoughts, you know, about a third person versus a whole group of people talking about a third party. Thank you for repeating that. If students treated staff like they do me, probably would be more likely to listen to the student. I'm trying to process that. Are you saying we had that conversation normally they say, yeah, you're right. Okay, are you saying that, that, that to your own students that they're saying, you're saying, hey, you guys are great with me. Why don't you treat this other teacher the same way? That's kind of how I'm reading that, that it, if the students, because th that's the thing that's true too, is that once that relationship is kind of messed up, this, the kids don't treat that same teacher the same way either. Anyway, it's a good opportunity to role model. It's a really good opportunity to sort of like teach the kids how to handle a personality that they don't really um, mesh with very well. Um, but here's what I want to ask you all. 
because I know how I handled it. Thank you, Maureen. Thank you for being patient. Yeah, having manners seems to coincide with being respectful. It's true. The thing is, and well, and here's where I'm going with this too. If you're dealing with another teacher, let's, let's say all of your teacher, your kids keep saying to you, you know, we're so frustrated with this teacher because she is always like losing our stuff, for example. Say they turn things in and she's always losing assignments. So it's, you know, it's information that you could theoretically give to that other teacher as their colleague. Would you go and tell them? Would, I mean, I, first of all, I know what you're going to say. It depends on what kind of a relationship I have. But Nobody really likes to hear criticism. So let's assume that you don't have a great relationship with this person. Let's assume that you have kind of a medium relationship with them where you sort of, you're professional and you're sort of friendly, but you're not close. Do you approach them about this? Do you approach your admin about it and say, yeah, right, that would not end well. I know, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm trying to imagine a teacher coming to me being like, the kids were talking about you today. So admin, Colleen, you're saying, wait a minute. I don't know if that is, that's not Colleen. Um, go, go and talk to the administrator. And maybe, maybe the best approach is to say to the students, if you don't feel comfortable talking to this teacher and you feel that it is a serious concern, then maybe you need to go and talk to the principal about it. I'm also thinking that with some of my middle school kids, I can see them <laughs> saying, Ms. Gonzalez told us to go to the principal about this. Like... They tend to take nuanced, you know, <laughs> like carefully worded statements and then just cut them down to um, the bare bones that just make you look good. It depends on the information the kids were giving. That's true. I mean, if it's obviously if it's something really, really serious, then you you have a professional obligation to go and tell somebody. But I mean, really, I think our overall objective is to teach our students how to problem solve. And so if the problem that they're having is with another teacher, then talk to them about ways that they can handle that. Encourage the students to speak to the teacher. That's the thing, is they should they should always try to go to the person first. Um, but yeah, it just depends. So I, it sounds like we all agree we wouldn't go to our colleague and tell them. <laughs> yeah, we just don't need that. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I was going to add about this topic. I just think that it's, um, I think probably the one thing that I know now that I didn't know when I first started teaching is that it's a, it's a thorny kind of a compliment. And once you show the students that you are responsive to that kind of a compliment, then they're going to keep doing it and they're going to they're going to keep doing it in your room. They're going to keep seeing your classroom as a place to talk crap about other teachers. Amy was just talking about how you can almost flip it and say, I know that this teacher cares a lot about you, uh, which is interesting. That's a, definitely a way of um, sort of changing the kid's energy around. I've heard people say that too. When, they, when, <laughs> when a friend says something negative about another friend, you can say, oh, she's always said wonderful things about you. <laughs> But I do think that kids are in a rough position. You know, when they're alone with certain teachers, they could be having a really terrible experience and feel that they have no recourse at all. So just having a sort of general conversation with them about what do you do if you feel that you are being treated poorly. You know, and sometimes what I would say, I mean, a lot of times I would try to vet out what they were saying. You know, I would say, are you, you know, are you sure about this? Are you sure you didn't? Mm -hmm. Oh, goodness gracious. I'm supposed to be on airplane mode, but maybe I'm not. I'm getting notifications. Um, I got completely derailed by that. Just talk, Oh, I would say to them, are you sure that you read the assignment carefully? Are you sure that you're paying attention? Because I know, here's the other, the flip of the coin to that one is that, you know, if they're saying stuff about another, <laughs> another teacher to you, what are they saying about you to another teacher? This just... The, some of these kids can turn around and be doing the same thing in other people's classrooms. So if all of you sort of develop a culture of, you know, we are we are not going to be talking negatively about other teachers without their presence, then um, you sort of set the tone for, for everybody. 
Uh, okay, so that's all I have tonight. If you really quickly, I'm going to do a little advertising tonight. If you happen to be somebody who knows about my classroom products, the things that I sell on Teachers Pay Teachers, we are having a two-day teacher appreciation sale right now. Uh, everything is 20% off in my store. And then Teachers Pay Teachers takes another 10% off at checkout. So if you happen to be somebody who has um, maybe seen my teacher's guide to tech and wanted to get that or the Google Drive course that I have for teachers and students, which teaches, it allows you to basically give your students these videos and they can teach themselves how to use Google Docs and Google Slides and Google Forms. Um, some of that stuff is a little bit higher priced than some stuff. So just wanted to let you know that tonight or tomorrow night would be a perfect time to go and grab that because it's about it averages out to be about 20 per, 28 percent off so wanted to let you know about that and I think that is all I am excited to be back on tonight and I'm planning on being back on again next Tuesday night and thank you all so much for your comments and I apologize for the ones that I did not um, yeah Lauren just added to the promo code is celebrate. If you want to get that extra 10% off at checkout, you enter the term. But it's right there at the top of Teachers Pay Teachers. Just remember to add that. Thank you all so much. Have a wonderful night, and I will talk to you again next week.